Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jonathan. I'm a second year PhD student at the University of Waterloo studying accounting. As you can tell, I have an academic poster board right here next to me, and I actually created this poster board a couple weeks ago when I attended my first research conference in person. For the conference, I submitted my first year summer research paper, and luckily it got accepted. And so me and a bunch of other PhD students had to create a poster board as well as a five minute presentation discussing our research. Now designing a poster board was really tough because the paper itself is probably 30 pages and you only have one poster board to select the key pieces of information that you think will resonate the most with the audience. And so designing my first poster board was a really interesting experience and I thought about creating a video showing you guys how I decided what type of information to include on the board, how I designed the board, and why I think this board was pretty effective for the conference. Now before I start the presentation, if you guys want to hit the subscribe button or the like button, that would really help me out. Okay, so here in front of me we have the poster board. I actually designed the poster board in Microsoft PowerPoint because I think PowerPoint gives you the flexibility of using different sizes depending on your poster board as well as organizing the information is just a lot easier. And so my first tip is actually to reach out to the conference organizers or your PhD coordinator to see if there is any sort of particular template that they want you to use. The template that I have for this conference is actually provided by the conference organizers since the University of Waterloo does have a gold and black theme. We can see that you know the title is black, there's a nice gold bar at the top, and then we can see the university logo and then a major sponsor of the conference at the bottom. And so before you start designing your own poster board, it's good to see if there are any constraints on the poster board itself based on any existing templates. And another thing I would recommend is you can also reach out to the conference to see if they have any examples of past poster boards that were presented at the conference. This will just give you an idea of how other people have designed their poster boards. Some are really detailed, some are not. And so getting a flavor of what the conference is expecting will help influence how you want to put information or graphics onto your poster board. But other than that, we can see here that I divided my poster board into three main sections and I'm going to go through each of the sections as well as the title. So the first thing I want to talk about is definitely the title. Picture yourself in a room with a dozen other poster boards. One of the easiest way to grab someone's attention is to have a big title that's bolded and contrasts well against the background color so it kind of pops out a little bit. And so we can see here that even though it's a template that's provided by the conference organizers, I do think that the font that I chose is appropriate. So I think the font that I have here is pretty big. Okay, so it's around 110 font. From a distance, you can definitely still read my title and also see my name. So those are just two good points to attract people's attention. And so just make sure that you pick a nice font that's big, bold, and able to, you know, just pop out compared to the other poster boards. Now, the first section of my poster board has the research question and the results. And I think it's best to put information at the very top that you want your audience to take away. And so I think there are two big things when it comes to your poster board. Number one is you want to tell the audience what exactly you're researching. So what's the research question? And number two, you want to tell the audience what exactly are your results because the results are mainly going to be what the audience takes away after they look at your poster board and move on to another poster board. That's what I have here. It's plain and simple. What exactly was I researching about this whole time and what are my results? And I keep the results pretty high level. Within the paper itself, you know, I have main results and then I also have supplemental results but I don't include a lot of the supplemental results because I don't think the audience is going to retain that much information. Remember that they're probably going to spend at your board maybe five to 10 minutes. And so really just talking about the main results, I think is good enough. And so that's pretty much what this first bullet point is here. I talk about how I find that firms that have higher levels of operating leases are charged higher bank loan prices after the adoption of ASCA 42. And pretty much all the uh, rest of the bullet as well as the second bullet is just supplemental information in case they're interested uh, in the topic. But overall, I think that information you want your audience to take away, you should definitely put it at the top. So the second section of my poster board deals with more of the background information. So here we have background information, the motivation for the study, as well as hypothesis development. Now within the paper, these are definitely big sections that I would say probably covers like one third to maybe one half of the paper. And so I felt that it was important to provide this information on the poster board as well because it provides a lot of context that helps you understand why I'm examining the research question and why I think my research question is important to research. And so that's what the background information is really about. Because I'm looking at a lease accounting standard, I include a little table that looks at the previous standard as well as 
the new standard and highlights what are the differences between the two. And I use a table because I find that a table um, is really good at summarizing before and after information compared to just a regular bullet point. When it comes to research hypothesis development, it's also really important because you want to explain to the audience what type of theory or what's your reasoning on predicting a certain direction. And so if you think that X is going to have a certain impact on Y, you have to explain why you think that relationship holds. And hypothesis developments are definitely really important within the paper. And so I predicted that it might have been also an important question that I might get asked during the poster board session. And so I just included a couple bullet points here just to help me retain some information in case uh, I get asked a couple questions on that and I don't remember the information. But you can see here that I was able to condense three sections, background information, motivation, and hypothesis development into this little section with just six to seven bullet points. And that's definitely the biggest challenge when it comes to your poster boards because you have so much material within the paper. And as an author, you probably think that every bit of information is gonna be really, really important. But I think it's important to take a step in the shoes of the audience. They're only gonna be looking at your poster board for a few minutes and they have to go through maybe a ton of poster boards that day. And so they're only really looking for the key bits of information um, that's not too detailed, but speaks loud enough that helps them understand what exactly your poster board is about. And so I did spend a lot of time trying to put different pieces of information into this section, seeing what fits, seeing what doesn't. Um, and I think what I have here does speak mostly to my paper and helps the audience understand exactly what my paper is about without overburdening them with too much information. And the last section that I have here is about the main research design. So when it comes to research, a big question is how exactly did you test your research question? And since I'm interested uh, in archival research, I performed my study using a uh, regression. And so I felt that it was important to define what was my dependent variable, what was my key independent variable, and how I calculated my key independent variable. So we can see here that my treat variable was the big variable in my regression. And so that's why I dedicated more real estate to defining how exactly I constructed this variable. Whereas obviously I have other independent variables in my regression that were less important. And so I just kind of summarize all of them within one little bullet point. I also thought it was important to discuss about the sample selection, specifically why I examined certain years that I did and why I excluded or included certain samples because that does have a big implication um, on your results. And finally, I include this little diagram showing exactly what periods I tested. Um, and so because my regression analysis was a little bit complicated and I felt that using bullet points wasn't going to communicate the information effectively, I decided to create this little diagram showing, you know, two years and, sh and essentially explaining that I compared this year with this period and this period. So I had three periods in total that I was comparing between. And I think this diagram does a good job of communicating that information. Now, overall, the reason why I decided to include these specific headings within my poster board is that within the accounting literature, these are the type of headings that you would see in an accounting paper. So definitely try to tailor the headings of the poster board to the type of headings that you would see in the papers of the literature that you're examining. And so because accounting research papers always have, you know, introduction, background, uh, theory development, hypothesis, research design, and then a conclusion, I figured that having those same headings on my poster board would be a pretty safe bet. Another thing that I would recommend is try to play with the different colors and font styles in order to help organize your information. So you can see here that for my main headings, I have a bolded blue text. And then for my subheadings, I have a italicized black bolded text. And then for my regular stuff, I just have regular black font. But then I also have a italicized unbolded blue font for my hypothesis development. And so I just think visually, it definitely looks pleasing having these different colors and different fonts. I think if I stuck with just black, it would have looked really boring and the headings wouldn't have uh, popped out of the page as much. The next tip that I recommend is don't include any big correlation tables or coefficient tables onto your poster board because I think that just wastes a ton of space and your audience is not going to interpret all those numeric information from the poster board. I think if you're trying to showcase the results of a specific test, having the results explained qualitatively is probably going to be a lot more powerful than including a huge table full of numbers that they're not gonna pay attention to. For me, I summarized my results qualitatively with these two bullet points, but alternatively, I could have 
took the tables that I had in my paper and put it onto the poster board. And I think that just would have A, wasted a lot of space and B, not provide effective information to the audience and help them interpret exactly what my results were. So I think for the most part, including huge tables is a big no-no when it comes to poster boards. But when it comes to including, you know, certain tables and diagrams to help you summarize information more effectively, I think that's definitely an avenue that you should explore and play around with. Last but not least, I do think that you should pick a font size that is not too small, obviously so the reader can read when they're at your poster board. So right now I'm rocking a size 32 font, which I think worked pretty well when I looked at my poster board when it was printed out. And overall, I don't think that my poster board is too crowded. I do agree that there is a lot of qualitative information on the board itself, but I think when you take a step back, it does feel full, but not overbearing. With that being said, that kind of wraps up my video. Hopefully my poster board helped you guys think of ways of designing your own poster board and hopefully me narrating some of the decisions that I made kind of helped explain why I decided to do certain things the way that I did. If you found the video really informative and you really enjoyed the video, then please consider subscribing to the channel and definitely hit that thumbs up button because it really helps out a small YouTuber like myself. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Damn, I don't even know how to feel. Hey, I can't even tell what's real. Yeah, I just want you to come chill. Hey, yeah, I thought that was a deal. Hey, why y'all explain?